Hello and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andy Schreer. I don't know if you've seen on the news, but in, in just a few days, on January 20th, a new president in our country will be inaugurated. And I mention that because today in church we are talking about Jesus' baptism. And today we are going to see that in a very real way, Jesus' baptism is really his inauguration. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that was an interesting week. I guess 2020 figured it wasn't quite done yet. After an extremely controversial and polemical presidential election and and now, after the events of this last week, I think it's safe to say that the eyes of the world will be glued on Washington, D.C. 10 days from now. On January 20th, at 12 o'clock noon, on the western portico of the Capitol building, Chief Justice John Roberts will ask President-elect Joe Biden to put his hand on a Bible and swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States and faithfully carry out the duties of his office. And that's when President-elect Joe Biden will become President Joe Biden. That's when, when he begins his presidency. That's when he's supposed to get to, to work. And his very first duty as President of the United States will be to give a speech. To lay out what, what his plans are. What he wants to accomplish as President of the United States. And it all begins just 10 days from now, on January 20th. What we call Inauguration Day. Today, we are remembering Jesus' baptism. And in a very real way, we can say that Jesus' baptism was really his inauguration day. Just last Sunday, we, we saw the wise men who went to worship baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Thirty years have now passed. Thirty years since the manger since the shepherds, since the angels, since the, the, the star in the east and the wise men. The Bible really doesn't tell us a whole lot of what happened during those 30 years. We only have one story from Jesus' childhood when he was 12 years old and went to the temple in Jerusalem. And now all of a sudden we find Jesus, 30 years old, walking toward the Jordan River. But he's not a, alone. Large crowds have been flocking to the Jordan to see Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. At this time, John the Baptist was the most famous man in all of Israel. He was an eccentric prophet who wore a, a camel's hair coat and ate wild grasshoppers. He was a, a powerful preacher who called the people to repent and be baptized. He told them to get ready because the king was coming, one who was more powerful than he. A guy who would baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with power. So thousands of people made the trek through the wilderness to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, I just told the kids, but do you, you remember what that word means, right? To baptize means to what? To wash, yeah. In baptism, God washes us. He washes us of all the, the dirt and filth of sin. The way to get ready for the coming king is but to, to confess your sins and, and trust in the promise 
of baptism, the promise that all your sins are washed away. Baptism is a washing, not of dirt from the body, but of sin from the soul. And so we can understand John's confusion. You know, Matthew tells us that, that when he looked up and saw Jesus standing in front of them there in the Jordan, he was confused. He asked Jesus, he said, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? That's a good question, right? Why did Jesus need to be baptized? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, Jesus is God. He's perfect. He doesn't have any sins which need to be washed away. So why be baptized? And the only thing Jesus told John was, he said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And so John baptized him. And immediately the skies opened and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. And God the Father spoke from the clouds and he said, This is my son. You are my son. With you I am well pleased. Years later, as we heard in our second reading for this morning, Peter, who had witnessed these events, tells us what that means. He said that Jesus was, was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. At Jesus' baptism, he was anointed. Now, do you know what that means, to anoint? Well, in ancient times, they would fill a ram's horn with oil. And then they would pour that oil over the head of, of a person who was the, the, next, the one that was chosen to be the next king, or to be the next prophet, or the next priest. Anointing was really their inauguration day. It was God's way of saying, this is the person I have chosen to be in that position. It was God's way of saying to that person, it's now time for you to get to work doing that job. Jesus' baptism was his anointing. God literally pointed at him and said, this is the guy, this is my son. This is the promised Savior. Did you know that the, the name in the Old Testament that they used for the Savior who was to come, the promised Savior, was the name Messiah? And the name Messiah in Hebrew literally means the Anointed One. And that name Messiah in the Greek language is the name Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Chosen One, who God sent to save us. God the Father was really telling Jesus that day, it's time for you to get to work. Jesus' bap Jesus baptism was his inauguration day. It marked the beginning of his public ministry here on earth. At that point, Jesus began to to call his first disciples. He began to preach and to teach and to heal. And he carried out that ministry for three years, all the way up to the day he was nailed to the cross. Because in the end, that is what Jesus came to do. That is what God anointed him to do, to die. To suffer the punishment, the death we deserve for all our dirty and ugly sins. Jesus' baptism gives us the confidence that he is who he said he is. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people saw the dove come down and heard the voice from heaven say, this is the guy. There is no doubt Jesus is the one God chose. He is the, the chosen one. But Jesus' baptism doesn't just give us confidence. It also served as an encouragement, a strength for Jesus. Because you've got to remember, Jesus is God, right? But 
He also came as a human being. And he felt things just like we do. He was about to suffer, and he knew exactly what was coming. He was going to suffer things we can't even begin to imagine. And so to help him, God the Holy Spirit and God the Father came to him in his baptism to encourage him, to strengthen him, to carry out what he had come to do. Jesus' baptism was his inauguration day. And in a very real way, you could say that your baptism is your inauguration day. Unlike Jesus, each of us here today was born with a deep need for baptism. Because we are all covered in the filth of, of sin. And sometimes we, we, we admit that, yeah, that's right, I'm sinful, but, but we, we like to think we're not that bad. I mean, sure, I'm a sinner, sure, yeah, I've got to do some bad things, but I'm not that bad. I'm a pretty good person deep down. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the, the cartoon Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown and Snoopy, you know what I'm talking about, right? Well, Charlie Brown had a friend named Pigpen. Do you remember Pigpen? Pigpen was covered in filth from head to toe. Everywhere he went, he was surrounded by a cloud of dust. That's us. We are, are filthy from head to toe. We are covered in the grime of our, of our angry and ugly thoughts. We're covered in the filth of, of the lies we told our parents and the lies we tell our spouses. We are covered in the dirt and ugliness of all the bitterness we feel and, and direct towards those who disagree with us about politics or about pandemics. We are covered in the filth of all those ugly words which, which roll off our tongues. We are covered from head to toe in the muck and mud of sin. And yet God promises us in our baptisms that we are washed clean. We are washed clean in Jesus' blood. We are forgiven forever. You see, your baptism didn't just give you forgiveness for all the sins you committed before you were baptized. For example, I was baptized on September 4th, 1973. A long time ago. But the way to say it isn't I was baptized. We say I am baptized. I am washed of all my sins. As long as I believe in Jesus, as long as I have faith in my heart, the promises of my baptism stand true. I am washed clean in Jesus' blood. I am forgiven for every sin I have and will ever commit. That is the promise of my baptism. In your baptism, God washed you. Washed you of all your sins. He, he adopted you. He anointed you. He said, you are my daughter. You are my son, whom I love. In your baptism, he chose you to be his child. He even says he's pleased with you. God is proud of you, despite all of your filth and ugliness. And he can say with you, I am well pleased. Not because of the way you've lived, but because all the bad stuff has been washed away forever because of Jesus. And that means God is never going to look at you with angry, or disappointed eyes. That's the promise of your baptism. My baptism was my inauguration day. The day God gave me faith. The day he chose me. The day he adopted me. The day he washed me clean. 
But Inauguration Day is just the start, right? It means it's time to, to get to work. What I mean by that is this. Don't let the promise of forgiveness in your baptism, don't treat that like a get-out-of-jail-free card. That means you can now do whatever you want because, hey, I'm forgiven. Baptism means God has chosen you to be something. And it's time to, to get to work. He's washed you of all your sins so that you can now live for Him. Your baptism was your inauguration day. It's time to get to work. It's time to remember who you are. You are sons and daughters of God Himself. So live like it. Speak in a way that is worthy of children of God. And that includes the way you, you speak to those who disagree with you. The way you speak about those who disagree with you. About politics or pandemics or masks. Both in person and on social media. Children of God speak respectfully about the, the governing authorities God has placed over them. Children of God speak lovingly and respectfully to other people. They obey the government even when they disagree. You are a baptized child of God. Live like it. It's time to get to work. Let's get to work reaching out to others with the, that forgiveness that God offers by inviting our family and friends. Let's reach out to our fellow members who in this pandemic have maybe gotten away from God or, for, or from church. Let's get to work getting our kids back in Sunday school. You know, we have a motto right now here in our church. I don't know, I think I've told you all this before. But we have a motto right now as we're coming out of the pandemic. And our motto is this. No one left behind. We've got a lot of work to do. Your baptism is a reminder. It's time to get to work. In 10 days, on January 20th, as... President-elect Joe Biden becomes President Joe Biden. I would encourage you to remember Jesus' inauguration day. Remember his baptism. Remember who he is and what he came to do for you. And then remember your own baptism. How God washed you clean. How he adopted you. How he chose you. And then, let's get to work. Being what God chose us to be. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.